Good morning. Good Monday morning. <clears throat> um, it is the first Monday of Lent. The very beginning here, the first full week of Lent begins today. And we are going to be <clears throat> in Matthew, um, Matthew 25, 31 to 46. We're going to be talking about the final judgment and the sheep and the goats. So find your way to Matthew 25, 31 to 46. We'll start with the Holy Spirit prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations. Through Christ our Lord, amen. All right. So here we are in Matthew's gospel <clears throat> with Jesus, who is speaking today. So um, Matthew 25, 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on the left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them saying, truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Okay. There's a lot there. Um, First, this is one of those places where Jesus either has to be a liar or a lunatic or the Lord, because he's talking about sitting on a glorious throne. Um, so he was either delusional about his power, or he is indeed the Lord of glory, sitting on a glorious throne, who will judge the nations. And if we believe that he is Lord, then we have to take the rest of this passage very seriously, because here he is telling us how we will be judged. So the first thing we have to do is make something crystal clear. The Catholic Church does not teach that we are saved by our works. That would be a Pelagian heresy. It was emphatically condemned in the fifth century. We are not judged by our works. But works do play a role in the way that we struggle things out on this side of heaven, um, in the kingdom of God here on earth as we journey to heaven. So how are we saved? We are saved by God's grace, which we did not earn. We cannot earn God's grace and we will never earn God's grace. There is nothing we can do that is that worthy of the gift, the greatest gift really, that is his grace. And what we do is we live our lives in response to that gift. We don't live trying to earn the gift. 
We receive the gift and we let the gift change us. So grace makes us different. It calls us to behave differently. And we are judged by the king on his throne in glory by the way that we behave in response to that life-changing grace. So grace changes us. Jesus is really direct here, and the church, in her wisdom, offers us this gospel at the beginning of Lent so that we can contemplate it throughout our journey to, to Easter. It's clear. It's a clear call to how grace is supposed to change our hearts so that we are inspired to behave differently out there in the world. We believe that he is the king of glory. And we are called to live in the kingdom of God here on earth and to be with him forever in heaven. And that's where he is right now. That's what he's talking about in this passage. In this discourse, he is very direct about what is expected here and now in order to open the gates to the final community of perfect love in heaven. There are only two categories. You're either a sheep or you're a goat. And goat does not mean greatest of all time in this context. Goats characteristically like to do their own thing. In Jesus's powerful estimation in this passage, the own thing that the goats did was nothing. Their own thing amounted to nothing because the things that matter to Jesus are the acts of service that he has taken the time to delineate here. So when we go off on our own, in our own direction, outside of the will of God, and we do our own thing, that essentially measures up to nothing, to wasting a lifetime of opportunities to love well. So our, self our salvation is not determined by a ledger sheet of good works. That is not what he's saying here. It's determined um, by whether we have become more and more like Jesus. And with that becoming, we have acted more and more like Jesus from a genuine place in our hearts, a genuine place of transformation, right? So some people who had heard of Jesus in this passage, who actually knew him and who absolutely would have cared for him if they had seen him in the flesh, hungry or naked or thirsty or any of those things. They would have taken care of him. They're going to get to the judgment and they're going to discover that they never became like him in their selfless caring for everyone who needed care, who was created in the image of God. Jesus is saying, all my people are created in my image. He says that in his kingdom here on earth, everyone is a chosen person and everyone is to be treated with infinite respect and dignity. The way to prepare to live all of eternity in that final community of love is to learn here on earth how to love the way God loves to let that love become who you actually are. Um, so this isn't a checklist of good deeds. It's not that at all. It's a, it's a reflection of the heart. It's a change of heart that fuels you, animates you, and makes you want to go out and behave the way Jesus would behave towards all these people. Jesus is already present in them, in every person. And only, he's in disguise right now, right? So at the end, he's revealed in glory. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, do I recognize Jesus in other people? Do I see the need? Do I see the hidden glory? And then how would I fare if there were a sorting right now, today, of the sheep and the goats? Where would I be? And the message is super simple. It's like, it, this, is, this is simple, but not easy. The Lord will judge me on my love and my service to others. 
He's in the poor, he's in the sick, he's in the prisoner, he's in the strangers, he's in the people around your dinner table and sitting in the other pew. That is Jesus. So he's, he, 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 there is a call here to go out and to find him out there, but there's also a call here to recognize him in the people nearest you, the people right there in your field of vision to see the face of God in the faces closest to you. Are you willing and ready and um, available to set aside your plans, those places where you're like a goat wanting to go off on your own? Are you able and willing to set aside those things and to meet the needs of the people in whom Jesus has disguised himself? Where are the hungry? Where are the naked? Where are the homeless in your world? Can they reach you? Ask yourself, am I approachable and available? Or have I organized my life so that no one would dare impinge on my plan, my goat plan? So prop your Bibles open, Matthew 25, 31 to 46, and prayerfully ask yourself, Lord, you have made this the sole criterion of judgment. How will I measure up? How is my heart? Do I have the heart of a goat? Or am I a sheep made in the image of a good shepherd? Have a beautiful Monday. We'll see you later. Thanks for being here. Bye.